A big problem of the Fujifilm system for video creators has been the lack of super wide angle lenses. As a video creator, you're constantly in front of the camera, but you also want to capture nice B-roll shots and you want a blurry background. So you ideally want to have a wide angle lens with a large aperture. That was actually one reason why I switched from Fujifilm to Sony about one and a half years ago. But now Vilchox brought out the 13mm f1.4 lens and Fujifilm also leveled up with the X-H2S, especially when it comes to autofocus. And that makes me believe that Fujifilm is actually really attractive again for video creators. So I would say let's get some shots with this lens and camera combination and see what I like and dislike about it. Yeah, I'm actually back in Germany, not in Thailand for two and a half months. We're traveling Europe a bit and also going to Bali later for a month. So lots of great videos coming up. Yeah. Today we're going to a place called Externstein. I actually haven't been there before, but we're pretty close already. And now I'm vlogging on the Wildschocks 13mm f1.4 and I really like the look of it. It's quite wide still. It's about the same look as you get on the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on Sony cameras. And this is a lens that many people really enjoy. It was in 1452 when Obelix fell into the wonder drink and then he put the stones here just because he can. Okay, let's start with the specs and little disclaimer before I got this lens for free But I'm not paid to make this video and Vilchox will also not see this video before it gets live And first spec obviously is the 13 millimeter f1.4 which gives you equally 19.5 millimeters on a full-frame camera with f2.1 The body has a really solid build quality. It's all metal even the sun hood is metal But that's across most Vilchox lenses and I actually really like that build quality is just awesome and the lens also comes with an aperture ring which is clicked what you might not like if you shoot a lot of videos if you want to use the aperture for smooth exposure transitions but to be honest I personally don't do that I never change my exposure or my aperture while I'm shooting videos so it's not really a downer for me I actually like this click so I can feel at what point I am and another important spec of course is the autofocus and I can only say so far it's great we will do some tests later but it's like all Wilchox lenses on Fujifilm cameras there are some of the better ones it also comes with a USB-C port, not for charging, there are no batteries in this lens, it's only for firmware upgrades and I'm not really sure if you actually need it because the lens already performs good but it's good that they can upgrade that in the future. And the lens also has little focus breathing so while you're focusing you cannot see much breathing in the lens and that's always welcome for video shooting as well. And the minimum focus distance is also really good on this lens with 22 centimeters so you can get really close and it also only weights 420 grams. What also makes it good for vlogging especially and the filter thread is 67 centimeters what I really like because all my Tamron lenses before on Sony cameras ha also had 67 centimeters and all the filters that I have are 67 centimeters so that's actually why I use this lens right now with the Nisi true color variable ND filter which I can absolutely recommend one of the best filters out there and it's also good if you want to get the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter lens on the Fuji system that is also 67 centimeters so then you only need one filter and no step-up rings or so personally I'm not a big fan of step-up rings and finally the price $429 I think that's very reasonable for a lens like that, especially because there is no other lens like that out there. We will do a quick comparison later to the 12mm f2 from Sam Yang. I just did a quick minimum focus distance test here. And as you can see, like now it's already in focus, like on this distance, that's definitely less than 22 centimeters. So I would actually say that they claim a worse minimum focus distance than it actually has, which is a good thing. So you can get really, really close to things. Like I'm surprised. And that's our first autofocus test here now for a vlogging environment. It's actually quite hard, like it's switching between dark and bright all the time. But so far my experience with the autofocus of this lens it's just perfect and I must actually say all Wilchox lenses that I ever used both on Fujifilm and also Sony cameras always performed really good so 
absolutely no issues here. Also vlogged before and I never had the impression that it ever lost focus. But let's also come to the next autofocus test. Yo, future Pascal here. I just finished the autofocusing test in the steady shot here on a tripod. And to give you a conclusion about the autofocusing on this test, it's actually pretty good. I have no complaints here. So you could see even the focus transitioning for when I got out of the shot is actually super smooth, not as jumpy as on a Samyang, for example. So I would say there's nothing really to complain about the autofocus and this lens definitely profits a lot from the new autofocusing system on the X-H2S. Now we're at the Hermann's thing now. Let's go inside. Hey mom, the view is quite nice, huh? <laughs> yes, oh, very nice. Okay, I can't see anything. They want money from me, they don't get it. They already got money, it should be free. Missing Ted girl. No. Not used to this cap. Cap, not cat. <laughs> There's one more thing that I think many people get wrong about lenses like that and that is that with an APS-C crop that the aperture would change. This is actually not true. What actually changes is your position to the subject. Like when you have this 1.5 crop then you have to step a bit back to get the same framing and therefore you get less background blurs. That's why people say like okay a 1.4 lens becomes an f2.1 but the aperture itself actually stays exactly the same. What means that it's actually better to have an APS-C camera with an f1.4 aperture instead of a full-frame camera with an f2.1 aperture if you record in low light. Of course it also depends a bit on the low light performance of the sensor. I actually mentioned that in my X-H2S review as well. Like it doesn't necessarily mean with a smaller sensor that it's worse for low light. It depends on the se sensor technology. But yeah I think it's important to mention that here as well. It is good to have this f1.4 aperture. And another thing that you might be worried about by using a wide lens like that is that you might not be able to get close enough to your subject like you only have these 13 millimeters there but there is this fixed crop magnification function or however it's called in the menu I will just blend that in here and that's actually a nice feature to use with this lens because it gives you a 1.38 crop and that essentially puts you at somewhere in the 25 millimeter area on this lens which is not super close it's still wide but it's already enough to get many shots that you couldn't get otherwise so it's not that you're completely unflexible with a camera such as the X-H2S and this lens but also the X-T4 has this functionality so there you can also get a bit closer to your subject yeah let's get some more drink I'm quite thirsty You come to Germany, eat Spätzle. Let's talk about image quality with this lens and to be brutally honest I'm not someone that pixel peeps lenses like if I like the look then it's fine if not then not and from what I've seen like I use this lens now for about two weeks I can say that it looks sharp and contrasty to me I never had any shot where I had any complaints that I would refer to the lens like if I had complaints then it was my fault so I'm perfectly happy with it but let's also talk a bit more about what I like about this lens this is especially the Booker Booker is definitely full frame look like even if I'm or as another subject that I film is a bit farther away the Booker looks really nice it's smooth I couldn't see like any weird stuff going on like you know like sometimes you, you see that the booker looks a bit round or stuff like that it was not present on this lens so it looks really good and I also did a quick test for chromatic aberrations and I can see it a little bit but to be honest I have chromatic aberrations on so many lenses even with Sony Tamron lenses also some native Sony lenses before and I, I never really had an issue in actual life with that so for me it's not really a problem but if you really care a lot about chromatic aberrations then you might look into something else but I mean there is no other 13 millimeter lens for Fuji so you likely don't have another option anyway but it's it's also not like really bad I've seen lenses that had worse chromatic aberrations also important of course is vignetting and I did a few tests here also compared with the Samyang 12 millimeter f2 and you can see it a little bit at the lower aperture and to be honest 
I mentioned it already on my Wildshox 24mm 1.8 review for Sony that I actually like to have a bit of vignetting from the lens because it drives the attention to the center of the frame, it looks nice and it feels a bit different than adding a vignette in pose. So also nice performance overall at f1.4 to be honest I expect that there is a bit of vignetting so no problem with that. And you can also get sun stars with this lens, they start at around f8 but I would suggest you to fully close the aperture aperture to f16 because there they actually look the best at f8 I didn't find them that beautiful but you can see it a bit and talking about sun stars this lens is also great for astrophotography but I can't test it right now there are no mountains here where I stay at the moment so no option to test here could maybe test it a little bit in the Dolomites where we are soon I'm not not sure if I can actually do astrophotography there or not but if yes I will include that in some future videos and link them in the description below so much about the image quality from this lens I'm totally happy with it and I think that most people will be as well especially because it really gives you this full frame look with a pretty light lens on the Fujifilm system now I think I made it look like the Wildshox 13 mm f1.4 lens would be the only fast super wide angle option for the Fujifilm system just not entirely true there's also this one here the Samyang 12 mm f2 lens which I think I mentioned already before a few times in this video depending on how I cut it later and this lens has the disadvantage that it only has an f2 aperture which is still not bad to be honest if you want to shoot in low light but it gives you less background blur so if you want that then definitely the Vilchox is the winner there but therefore it has a little bit wider field of view and this is actually the reason why I use both lenses generally I want to have more blur on this full frame look that the Vilchox lens gives me but when I'm in my YouTube studio Video, then I'm sitting in front of my table and especially if I do unboxings or so on then I want you to see everything on the table so there it's obviously that I want to have a bit wider look as otherwise I would have to move the table back and I don't really like that so this is why I actually use the Samyang lens all the time in my YouTube studio but I also just brought it on the trip now because well it's so light it's like less than 300 gram why should I not put it in my bag just in case I need two wide angle lenses or so but there's also another issue that I found with the Samyang lens and that is when it comes to autofocusing the autofocus in general works good like if you're in a setup like I'm now like sitting in front of the camera the Samyang will do perfectly fine but the moment you move a little bit more then you see this jumpiness of the autofocus of the Samyang lens and that is especially visible when you want to have a focus transition because then it's it's like so quick that it feels too snappy it's not really beautiful anymore while the Viltrox lens actually performed really good there as we could see in the autofocusing test so I would say if you need a lot of movement in your shots and you want the autofocus to, to work good there then better go for the Viltrox lens but aside from that if it's just you sitting on a table or so the Samyang is also perfectly fine and when it comes to optical qualities of the Samyang lens I personally also don't have anything to complain but I also only shoot video I'm not a pixel people I'm not a photographer so I'm quite forgiving there and yeah I'm happy with both lenses so far and also the Samyang is all plastic still feels quality well made but it's all plastic so when you drop it it's more likely that the Samyang lens breaks therefore it's also even lighter than the Viltrox lens but there's one other lens that I'm waiting for on the Fujifilm system which is the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeters we already know it from Sony APS-C cameras I think this could be a game changer for the Fujifilm system because being able to zoom in is always better than having to activate the crop mode in your camera so please Tamron give us this lens soon but until the Tamron lens comes out I will use the Viltrox for all of my vlogging and lots of b-roll shots it's a great lens and I think even then I will use it a lot just because of the f1.8 aperture aside from that if you want to know some more interesting or good lenses for the footage film system check out this video here in the corner there I reviewed a few lenses about one and a half years ago for the footage film xt4 and of course what counted back then still counts today aside from that please leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing for upcoming videos see you